today is off to an epic start. I've already been super productive. I woke up at 6.30. Um, the video from yesterday, you guys commented on that and explained that I had the completely wrong tool for the job of getting that ball joint uh, bushing pressed out of my knuckles. Someone followed up with some DMs to my Insta and sent me links to the correct item on Amazon, which I've already ordered, which should be here first thing tomorrow morning. It's this thing here. It's an epic tool kit that kind of like comes with everything you need to press out bushings and stuff like that on knuckles and in cars and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's gonna be here tomorrow morning, which then means I should be able to get the Hikus Eliminator kit all done tomorrow. Um, also, I just found out that tomorrow, uh, the paperwork and everything will be ready for me to pick up from the police station, approving my Shako Shiome, which then allows me to get the plates for my S15. So we should still be on track for the end of this week, getting plates for the S15, being able to drive it on the street legally, which means epic S15 stuff. But right now I'm heading to Starbucks. I'm gonna get my favorite coffee, which is caramel macchiato. Then we're gonna pick things up from there because we're heading to an epic car yard, no other than Garage R. Not only did I get my coffee, but I also decided to treat myself to a nice chocolate chip cookie. How epic is the autofocus on this camera though? Seriously, absolutely amazing. So this is a first time for everything, right? And out of all the car yards that I've been to here in Japan, they've had absolutely no problem with me just, you know, filming the cars that they have for sale and stuff like that to show you guys. But for some reason, Garage R, the guys were like, absolutely no, hell no, never gonna happen, get out of our sight. Like, pretty rudely. So, um, there you guys go. So a little tip, if you guys wanna go to Garage R and check it out, don't take any photos or film anything because they're like crazy strict on that for some reason. Uh, kinda makes me feel like they have something to hide. But anyways, uh, that's just how it is. So, we're gonna go and find another car yard to check out. I'm gonna jump on the phone, check out Google Maps and see what we can come up with. $10 to the first person who can guess what plan B is. Uh, I couldn't find any car yards around in the local area. So, we're up. Up garage. <laughs> um, I know I've made a lot of videos here recently, uh, but you can't blame me. Plan B, these things happen. But before anything else, let's have a look at this Z32. It is super clean. This is probably the cleanest Z32 I've ever laid eyes on, other than uh, Roberto's in uh, the States, in Florida, from HP Logic. This thing is beautiful. It's kind of like this really nice creamy color, and I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up. Um, it's not as yellowy and creamy like uh, Adam LZ's 180, but it's like, it's more of a whitish kind of cream. Very nice, it's got the updated logo there. Very cool. I dig this. I've always loved these cars, but the logic in me says don't do it, Sam, because of how bad the engine bays are. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is a twin turbo model, but it's auto. Very, very cool. This guy is awesome. He's got a fully modified Honda Moto Comp. And uh, he just let me sat on it and took a picture. I'll throw it on the video, but super awesome guy. And I see this bike here all the time, so it was good to meet the owner. We're gonna go inside now and see what other parts we can find. Arigatou gozaimasu. We're going straight to the third floor because I wanna check out all the aero parts and see if they've got any carbon fiber hoods or bumpers or anything like that that I can use for the Skyline. See what we can find. So I found some more hoods and uh, looks like they've got an R35 one here for $500 carbon fiber. That's pretty cheap few scratches and things like that, but that's nothing a bit a, a fresh clear coat wouldn't fix. Um, uh, not carbon fiber, this is a fiberglass FRP for $30 for an R32 one. And then uh, NA Roadster or Miata, $30 FRP as well. So that's a pretty decent deal, honestly. What are these? Oh, R34 fenders. They want 500, like, like 400 and something dollars for them? They metal? Oh, they are. This is, I want to do the R34 GTR fender upgrade on mine um, because these are way wider in the GTR so you can fit a more aggressive wheel up front. Now, the only problem is, is obviously these are metal and I kind of want fiberglass ones that I can chop up and because I've got to add the 33 fender, this section to it. Has to be from like like here. Well really it's, it's more like from like here down to there. It has to be cut and molded together with the 33 fender. There's so many aero parts here. Some more hoods or bonnets over here. Another Mazda and a Roadster. $40 for a fiberglass one of those. And then over here are like assorted K-car hoods and bonnets and stuff. Uh, what's that from? S13 Rio bar for the rear. That's actually handy to have. What do you got here? JZX 100, probably a Mark II or something. Hood. 
$35 US. A little tiny bit of damage on the corner there, nothing you can't fix. S14 fiberglass front bar, shift sports. 250 bucks. Well, I mean, if you do the conversion right now for the USD, it's like $230 you'd probably be paying. I think there's another hood around here. I wonder what that's from. Ooh. That's real, though. No wonder they want like $700 for it. Far out. It's a real metal one. R34 GTR hood. And then uh, BMW 5 E60 Viz, Viz Riz, Racing. Viz Racing sports carbon fiber hood. They want like 1.1K for that. It's a little bit expensive. JZX90 front fenders, 55 bucks. That's pretty cheap. They look like they're in pretty decent condition too. Very nice. Some of you guys were asking in the previous video how much this was and I found the price for it here. They want about $890 for that. It's in really good condition though. Perfect black lip, no damage. Nice like white painted. Very nice. It's also got all the ventilation and stuff in there still. Like if you look at this one, it's got a whole bunch of like orange peel and paint issues and stuff. And this isn't black and it's very badly damaged and scraped. There's no price on that though. I tried looking for the tag, but there's nothing. Anyways, ooh, nice GT wing. What do they want for that? Is the price tag on that? That's not too bad. It's like 350 bucks US. So I just found these S15 over fenders for the rear. They're 50 millimeter over fenders. And uh, it says they're maker unspecified, but judging by how badly the fitment looks, it's probably origin. It's only uh, 9,000 yen, so like 90 bucks for a pair. Good for a drift beater. There's a random lonesome AE86 Hachiroku front fender there. They only want 25 bucks for that. There's some things like this that, that are good deals at Upgrade you can definitely get, especially body parts and aero parts. Definitely can get a good bargain here for that. So check this out guys, Upgarage definitely aren't stupid. Z32 headlights, they're not like in amazing condition or anything like, but they are the Xeon type. These were the ones that were also used in that Lamborghini series. Uh, I think the, the Diabolo, they're selling them for a grand. Bear in mind though, they are a good headlight, but uh, if you didn't know, the same headlight that's in the Z32 is the same headlight that's in the Diabolo Lamborghini. So uh, these uh, go for a pretty penny. <laughs> It's kind of funny how Lamborghini use Nissan parts in their car. I love it. Anyways, I'm just going through seeing if there's anything I can find that uh, I need or haven't seen in the shop yet. Uh, one thing actually that I wanted to show you guys is I'm changing the exhaust on my Skyline uh, to a HKS high power kit and I've been wanting to see the inside diameter of the muffler because um, mine doesn't actually like, mine's like a 3.5 inch all the way through um, but then in the muffler, it goes really, really small to like two inch. So I've got a lot of back pressure that builds up from my muffler. And I heard that HKS was practically four inch, like all the way through. And then I just had a look at this one on display and it pretty much is. So uh, I'm definitely going to be getting a brand new HKS high power exhaust, cat pack exhaust kit. Um, now, unfortunately, this is, I would buy this if it had the full kit, but it finishes there at this weird square flange the HKS. That's another thing that I hate about HKS high power muffler kits is there's a square flange there and I'm like who the hell thought of putting a square flange on an exhaust? It just doesn't make sense. Anyways, let's see what else we can find. Okay, so this is funny as this is an R32 GTR dash. Um, it's got the bubbling in this section here and a bit of bubbling there. No cracks. Overall though, it definitely needs a restoration. It needs a restore in some sections. Um, but you won't believe, this is the GTR tax right here. $400 for a really mediocre dash. Um, like the fact that it's got this huge bubbling here and here, it's just like, it's not worth $400 to me at all. Uh, I think they're dreaming with that price. But what are the prices like in the States right now for a kind of mediocre dash in this same condition? I'm wondering because if it's even more than that in the States, then like, ouch, I didn't know GTR tax went up so high. This is pure gold. Evangelion cooler for your car for $50. I almost want to buy that because it's so nostalgic and sick. Plugs in, keeps your drinks cool. That's awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. That is amazing. Shout out in the comment section if you would buy that hands down, like no questions asked. 
I just found the castor arms that I sold them last week. They're selling them for like $100 when they gave me 50, which is fine, like I, I understand that. It uh, looks like they got the listing kind of interesting though, 32 and 33 GTR apparently. Um, <laughs> okay, um, but they do say that it'll fit pretty much everything else like S chassis and other R chassis and even Laurels and Seferos and stuff like that, so that's good. All right, seriously, the weather here in Japan for the last few weeks has been absolutely junk and super unpredictable. Um, it, in the time that I've been in Upgar, I just started raining outside and now it's stopped again. Um, but, four-door skyline, and what I noticed about this is he's running GTR Brembo brakes front and rear. So that's a pretty expensive and decent upgrade. That's pretty sick. Obviously manual, RB25 DT, so this is technically an R34 GTT, and, uh, Definitely, please, owner of this car, please polish your headlights. You're hurting my feelings. Okay, so I'm cracking up. I just think it's so ironic that after following from yesterday's video and how much that flopped and nothing went according to plan, that then today I tried to be super productive. We planned the video. I went there and they told me I couldn't film and then I'm kind of like, oh crap, plan B and let's go to Up Garage. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow's video is going to be actually really good. We've got the stuff coming so that I can change that stuff on the rear of the skyline. We get to pick up the paperwork from the police station. So there's a bunch of stuff happening tomorrow. And then Friday, we're going to be back with Okachan and we're going to be sorting out, uh, essentially getting the plates for the S15. Um, Okachan flies back tonight from Okinawa from his summer holidays. So expect lots more videos back at the workshop there. That was another reason why like this week, my content's kind of been like, Oh, well, what should we do today? Uh, because I had planned to be at Yashio Factory all this week, working on the S15, putting the cage in and stuff like that. And Okachan sprung on me at the end of last week when he uh, was like, oh, by the way, uh, I'm not here for the whole of next week. I'm going to Okinawa. And I was like, uh, what? Like, we were supposed to go drifting and everything this week. Well, anyways, I'm not mad at him or anything like that, but it's just, it's just explaining to you guys why all my plans this week have not been uh, all that great. So I'm heading home now and uh, once I get home I actually want to do a bit of a check and see how full my catch can is. Um, earlier before I left today I did an oil check on my car and noticed it was missing a fair bit of oil out of the sump and uh, my car doesn't blow any white smoke, um, there's no issues with leaks or anything like that. So the only thing I can think of is with all the drifting that I've been doing lately uh, and how much I've been doing pulls and staying in the high RPMs, I've been a bit rough on this lately. <laughs> um, that because I don't have any oil restrictors or any head drain kits or anything installed that probably a lot of the oils just been blown out of the breathers so I want to just confirm that because I know that recently I did a compression test and compression's good there's no like obsessive blow by uh, the head gasket's good there's nothing in the coolant so that's the only thing that it could be in at least logically in my mind and I know that that's pretty standard for RBs if you don't have any oil restrictors or a head drain installed or anything that it will spit out a lot of oil out of the breathers so hopefully this weather kind of clears up when we get home and we can suss it out maybe i was a little bit optimistic when i uh said hopefully the weather gets better by the time i get home because uh, it looks like it's just about to get a lot worse look how dark those clouds are and it's heading right for me <laughs> look at that far out there's also a whole bunch of lightning and thunder happening over there so anyways we're home we're not going to let that stop us we're going to quickly do this as quick as i can i got my canadian dry ginger ale pet bottle that i just cut the top off to put all the draining in from here i really should set up like a drain port somewhere uh because i don't know if i can get that bottle in there to the drain port under there to undo anyways i'm going to try and do that and film how much comes out because uh, i'm very intrigued where all my oil went i topped it all up obviously before we went out but uh it's obviously an issue and i need to work out what's causing it so plan b time i realized that uh, this bottle's not going to fit in there with all the ac lines and stuff under the drain so i just figured it'd be easier to just take the whole thing out it's only two bolts and undo these two fittings here so that's what we're doing hoping it doesn't start pouring down with rain in the meantime. So we'll just quickly undo the hose lines, speed this up, do a time lapse, and then I'll pick it up when I get this thing out and we uh, give it a good drain. It doesn't feel like this is very heavy, so there's a good chance there isn't any oil in this. Um, which means that my engine has to be either burning it or there has to be a leak somewhere. Like there is, there's nothing in this at all. I just took the drain cap off and nothing's draining out of it. So that kind of leaves me at a stalemate. Something has to be either leaking or my car has to be burning oil. But it's so confusing because 
I don't have any white smoke or anything coming out of the exhaust. I, I don't understand. There has to be a leak then. But there's nothing in my driveway indicating there's a leak. So I'm kind of stumped. If any of you guys have any suggestions, um, please let me know what you think it could be or where I, where you think I should maybe take a look at. Because, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's confusing me right now. Where... What, what could be causing that, I have no idea. So got the catch can back in there and I only burnt my hand like five times on the exhaust manifold of the turbo. Um, but as you saw, dry as a bone, so that just confuses me even more because the evidence and what I'm looking at now is that there's no problem, but there's obviously a problem because my motor was missing about a liter of oil than what it had previously. So I'm thinking there's gotta be a leak somewhere. So I'm gonna jack this thing up and go over it probably tomorrow when I'm doing the rear arms or something and work out what's going on because there has to be a leak. The car's got good compression. See the lightning far out. Um, no, no excessive blow by or anything like that. Um, good compression. I don't see anything wrong with the turbo, like bleeding oil or anything like that because you'd see smoke out of the exhaust and everything like that. I don't think it's burning oil. There has to be a leak somewhere. Um, so we'll have to suss that out. It must just be like dripping only when the car's running or something on the road because I don't see anything sitting in my driveway. So it must be like dropping somewhere off the motor cleanly um, and not like collecting anywhere on the chassis. Geez, the lightning out there is getting insane. Anyways, um, so that's kind of got me a bit worried, so I'll obviously have to keep watching and keeping an eye on my oil until I can work out where it's going and what the problem is, but there's clearly a leak. that It can't be anything else. The motor's healthy and good, so yeah. All right, I'm ranting on this way too much, so let's go inside. So today, obviously, didn't go according to plan whatsoever, um, but I'm content with it and I'm okay because I was still really productive and I'm about to start editing and it's only like 6.30 in the afternoon. So that's really good. And uh, tomorrow, we'll be working on the Skyline, doing that hikers thing when that kid arrives, plus um, trying to figure out where the oil's going. I'm sure there has to be a leak and it only has to be happening under load. Um, so we'll get to the bottom of it tomorrow. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll just put a GoPro or something under there and then I'll just go for a few rips and rewatch the footage and see if there's anything I can see leaking. Uh, which kind of seems extreme, I know, but anyways. Um, but yeah, like I said, today, even though it didn't go according to plan, I still, we plan B worked out okay. We went to UpGarage, checked out some cool parts. I got to meet that guy with the Moto Compo and talk to him about how he upgraded it, put a bigger motor in it and like, rose it, put bigger wheels and forks and stuff like that on it. So that was kind of cool because I, I am interested in the Moto Compos and doing something with that in the future. But anyways, guys, hope you like this. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell me in the conversation what you thought. And uh, yeah, peace out, guys. Jamata.